What happens when you take one of the most powerful microscopes for biological imaging and combine it with a superconducting camera designed to image planets around nearby stars at the biggest telescopes in the world? You get something brand new, a microscope that can image in five dimensions, our familiar three spatial dimensions, plus spectroscopy in time. This is basically a microscope that can make 3D hyperspectral videos of objects like zebrafish embryos. Follow this series of videos as we create an incredibly powerful new instrument to unlock the secrets hidden inside our cells using the best technology from astrophysics to do it. Hi, I'm Joe Redford and I'm a postdoc in the Mazine Lab. Hello, I'm Peter Dirksen and I'm a graduate student in Sebastian Strykin's lab. Okay, at this point, Peter and I are putting together or aligning the laser and getting it through the galvos and mirrors up to where the uh, um, sample will sit. Now, did where did this whole assembly come from? The the breadboard and the the upper deck. Did that come from Sebastian's lab? Uh, yes, it did. Yeah, so we moved it all down from his lab a few minutes before the uh, video started. So I see a blue laser. What's what's happening here? Um, we're trying to get the laser up through a pair of galvos, and then there's um, a periscope, and then there's the final lens right there that will will be the um, back illumination of the uh, objective. Is that laser dangerous? Uh, no, it's so um, its max output is 10 milliwatts, so that's about twice the normal laser pointer. All right, we've skipped forward here. Now I see a camera. What's going on? Yeah, so now we're preparing to uh, co-align all the objectives. So you see in the center there's four objectives, so two are for illumination and two are for detection. Eventually, one will go to the cryostat, and then one will be for that camera on the other side. So we're just trying to get all the optics aligned so that we can see the light sheet inside the objectives. And now we got a shipment of Thorlabs parts, which contains all the relay optics and magnification to get the light into the cryostat. I've heard people describe Thor Labs as um, Walmart for optics. Yeah, yeah, that's what I've always heard it described as. They get you because they ship snacks with every order, so <laughs> they're famous for their lab snacks. Okay, so now we have the relay optics set up so the, you can see the tube going into the cryostat in the foreground, and then we move the camera onto the other side need for aligning the objectives and right now we're having some issues getting everything kind of co-aligned so that's why we're flipping the objectives around and trying to uh, reposition the um, the four. What's the deal with the syringe full of water? Um, so they're immersion objectives so they're made to um, work imaging into water to better match the index of refraction of the um, cells and transparent biological tissues. So this looks like a careful alignment of the uh, of that octagon here? Yeah, yeah, so now we're trying to get like the sample stages stage in the kind of correct position that was the little pillar sticking out before we put the objectives down and try to get everything kind of co-aligned. And right now I'm setting up the uh, MKID controls on my laptop while Peter's getting the camera set up. And we were having some issues getting in the image pr properly focused onto the um, kids. And so right now I moved the camera down to the other side of the all the magnification and relay optics to try to get a good um, focus beam, which you can kind of see in the computer in the background is the kind of beam coming to a focus of the illumination and then that's kind of being um, 
or there's a fluorophore in there so that you can actually see the illumination beam. And that's taken with this white and gray camera that's sort of front yep. and center. All right, so Peter, why don't you show us the, uh, how the audio goes, how the light goes through this? Yeah, so we start with our excitation laser, which is down here in the hiding under the table. This is passed off of three mirrors, one of which is actually pretty important for us. This is the mirror that is conjugated to the light sheet in the actual microscope. What this does is it allows us to change the tilt of the light sheet, so the tilt up and down that we see on the image chip when we're actually imaging, and then the tilt that we can see from above, this changes it in and out of plane. Next it comes into this two-axis galvo here. What this galvo allows us to do is take the beam and actually scan it up and down. And this creates what we actually call the light sheet. And then we periscope this beam up into the microscope. So we have our tube lens here for focusing the beam and then our objective would act, which actually focuses it into the microscope. And so in this objective cage here, you see two 10x objectives and two 20x objectives. The 10x objectives are each used for creating their own light sheet. Right now we are using one of the 10x objectives to do this. And then each of the 20x objectives are used for imaging this light sheet. And so we have one of these 20x objectives, which goes to the imaging camera. This is just a normal camera that we're using to see the image as we would expect. And then we have a 20x objective that goes into the kid device. And so we are using this one to actually send this image on to the kid. And then from there, we periscope it down through this um, tube lens or tube, which has multiple lenses just to magnify and actually match the setup of this camera since our pixels are much larger. And then it goes in where we have a calibration source or, or Eventually, the light goes into the um, 10,000 pixel X kid detector. And this is what we get. You can see the light sheet microscope. That what you're seeing now is a beam of light sweeping across our array. This uh, illuminates a target, and then we look at the light that gets scattered by the target out of the plane. So it is working.